have in mind and how they can change to assume new shapes. I ask the help of the gods who know the trick. Change me and let me glimpse the secret and speak better than I know how of the world's birthing and the creation of all things from the first to the very latest. Before there was water and dry land or even heaven and earth, nature was all the same. What we call chaos, with neither sun to shed its light, nor moon to wax and wane, nor earth hung in its atmosphere of air. If there was land and sea, there was no discernible shoreline, no way to walk on the one or swim and sail on the other. There was neither reason nor order, until at last a god spark flowed, then shone like a beam of light to define the earth and the heavens and to separate water from hard ground. Once these distinctions were made, and matter began to behave, the sky displayed its array of stars in their constellation. A twinkling template of order, the sea upon which they shone quickened with fish, and the woods and meadows with game, and the air with twittering birds, each order of creature settling into itself. A paradise, it would seem, except one thing was lacking, words. And so, man was born. He was born that he might talk. Some say that God perfected the world, creating of his divine substance the race of humans. Others maintain that we come from the more natural order of things. But one way or another, people came erect, standing tall, with our faces set not to gaze down at the dirt beneath our feet, but upward towards the sky, in pride, or perhaps nostalgia. you do with all the money in the world? What a question. I know what I'd do. Do you want to know what I'd do? No. I'd never do laundry again. That's it? That's the big dream? Among other things. Do you want to hear a little story? About rich people? Yes. Always. There was a certain king named Midas, net worth 100 billion. Now, I'm not a greedy man. But it is an accepted fact, a proven fact, that money is a good thing, a thing to be longed for, a necessary thing. And my God, do I have a lot of it. It wasn't always this way with me. The boat, the houses by the sea, the summer cottages, the winter palaces, the exotic furnishings, the soft clothes, the food, and it's Honey, can you stop that now? Be still now. Dad is talking. Excuse me, the outrageous food and the 200-year-old wine. No, it wasn't always like this. I came up from the poor, and I worked hard all my life. Still do, mind you. My father was a minor manufacturer somewhere in... Somewhere. But I was born with a head for business. And it's always been as though everything I touch has turned to gold. Not literally, of course. Wouldn't that be something? Turn the profit it. Sweetheart, Daddy asked you, be still, take it inside. You see this pool? It costs a pretty penny, I can tell you. But all it takes is hard work, plain and simple. And those who haven't got in them well, what can anyone do? They just haven't got it. Be still, you are driving me nuts already. But you know, I never forget that I do it all for mine. It's all for mine. Oh, for the, for the, um, <laughs> the family. <laughs> yes, family is what really matters. One's own family. I mean, not anyone else's, for God's sake. When I get home at midnight, seven days a week, in moments before sleep, I realize that. <laughs> I realize. <laughs> what was I? Oh, yes, the family is what really matters. Sir. Yes, what is it? This man's been making trouble. And tell me. We believe he is a baker, sir, of the worst, most drunken kind. Hello, King. What 
should we do? Nice place. Execute him? No need, no need. In my day, I've certainly been three sheets to the wind. Three sheets to the... What? What the hell are you talking about, King? I'm all rummed up. Why even last week at the feast for? Let me tell you something. You know what? No, what? Let me tell you. Yes? Let me tell you something. Yes, all right. I've been all over the world. Oh, have you? Yes, I, I'm lost now. But I've been all over the place. Hmm, how nice for you. You listening? Well, let me tell you. There is a country beyond this one where, uh... How very fascinating wealth, if you'll excuse me. No, wait. I stray from the crowd, and I'm lost now. But there is a country. Asia. Further. Africa. No, further. Over the ocean. I've been there. So? Oh. King, I tell you, it's like a dream. Uh, oh, a dream. I am telling you that in this place, the people, they see each other and they live without desire of any kind. And so time, there is no time, just the blue sky above and the pretty moon at night and you got the meadows under their feet with the yellow flowers and... Well, thank you. This has been most entertaining, but... And the people live forever. What? They live forever. They never die. What is it, some herb they have? Some... No. No, no, no. Something in the air. Something we could... Just still, I have shooting plates, you know, to bring them. No, 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 it's... Is that your daughter? What? Yes, go on, be still for once in your life. Go on, go on. You're rich indeed. Go on. Is an animal, even better if it's an animal, we can breed them here. My God, the millions. Don't worry, young man, you'll get your cut. No, no, it's... It's here. Some formula, you have it. The formula? No. It's here. And here. Oh. That inner light. What uselessness. All right, then off you go. You may sleep in the cabana. Thank you. Oh, for God's <laughs> sake, turn him over. Someone turn him over before he drowns. Night fell, but when the rosy finger dawn came back again. Midas? Good lord, who's there? It's Bacchus. I hear you have a follower of mine? A follower? Yes, the Leonard. He wandered from our group as we passed close to town, and I hear he's with you. Oh, the fellow in the cabana. Yes, take him. He is all yours. I'm grateful you didn't turn him away, Midas. You took care of him so that he didn't drown in his condition. <laughs> And I'd like to present you with a gift. A gift? Some ability, a minor miracle. Something to do with parties. Anything. Anything at all. You promise? Yes, of course. Then grant me that everything I touch, everything I put my hand to, will turn to solid gold. <clears throat> that is a really, really bad idea. What do you mean it's a bad idea? It's a brilliant idea. Think about it, Midas. No, you think about it. You gave your oath. We had a deal, for God's sake. Now follow through. All right, then. And from that moment on, everything he touched turned to solid gold. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me think where to begin. Delighted, he put his hands to branches of trees and flowers, and he had golden branches and flowers. All day long he experimented, almost insane with happiness, that the whole of the world could become his personal treasure. Late at night, he stumbled back into the courtyard, laden with precious gold. Papa! No! Take it away! Focus! Take it away! I can't. Yes, you can. You must take it away now. I'm sorry. 
Take it away. There is one way, I see. What? What is it? Walk as far as the ends of the earth. Find a pool of water that reflects the stars at night. Wash your hands in it, and there's a chance that everything will be restored. Anyone help me? Was that too sad for you? A little. All right, then. Here's another. Hello. 
Do you have any spare? Hey, get out of here! Get the hell out of here! I work hard for my money! And a thousand doors for slams on them. Hello. We're tired. We live on the street, and we hope that you might. I'm sorry. I'm um, so sorry. Sorry. At last, they came to a little hut on the outskirts of the town. Why bother knocking here? We've knocked on phones of all kinds. The houses of people with plenty to spare. Whoever lives here obviously has nothing. Let's give it a try all the same. We've come all this way. This is hopeless. Let's just go home. We're strangers. Philemon, there are guests at the door. Hello. We're strangers to these parts. We've lost our way in. Bountress, why are you standing here? We must bring our guests inside. Uh, do you know us? Of course. You do? Yes. Then who are we? Why, you're children of God. Come in. Come in. The two immorals, satisfied that their disguises had not been seen through, entered the house, lowering their heads to fit through the door. No, don't sit on the floor. Sit on chairs, as quality people do. Philemon rang to get another chair. Him not just fetch two pieces of cloth and had them, so the strangers might rest easy. She stirred the coals in the hearth and fanned the fires to cook them a meal. Philemon set out the embroidered cloth that they had saved for feast days. Baptist saw that one of the legs of the chair was short. And she propped it up with the shard of a pot. Philemon set a plate of olives, green ones and black, and a saucer of cherry plums. Then there was cabbage and some roasted eggs. For dessert, there were nuts, figs, dates, and plums. And a basket of ripe apples. Remember how apples smell? <sighs> At last, with a show of modest pride, they set out a bit of honeycomb for sweetness. Philemon poured wine from a bottle, but as he filled the glasses of the guests, he saw that the bottle remained full. And, and then, then they knew. Oh, mercy, mercy! You're divine, and we've served you with such a simple meal. Thought just go and kill the goose. But let it live. We are gods, and we thank you. You've done enough. More than your nasty neighbors thought to do. And suddenly, everything was changed. Their poor little house. Their simple cottage was becoming grander and grander, a glittering marble column temple. The straw and wreaths of the thatched roof metamorphed into gold, and gates with elaborate carving sprang up as brown gave way to marble paving stone. Old man, old woman, ask us what you will. We shall grant whatever request you make of us. Having spent all our lives together, we ask that you allow us to die at the same moment. I hate to see my wife's grave, or have her weep at mine. The gods uh, grant you their wish. wish. Having arrived at a very old age together, the two stood in front of what once was their modest doorway, and was now a grandiose facade. And thou just noticed her husband was beginning to put forth leaves, and he saw that she too was producing leaves and bark. They were turning into trees. They stood there, held each other and called for the bark closed over their mouths. Farewell. Walking down the street at night when you're all alone, you can still hear stirring in the intermingled branches of the trees above the ardent prayer of Bouchus and Philemon. They whisper, Let me die the moment my love dies. They whisper, Let me not outlive my own capacity to love. They whisper, let me die still loving, and so never die. 